MIT has a real focus around um, being relevant for the real world. And when we think about that and we look at how would that, how does that influence um, our curriculum, we're now undertaking some major transformation initiatives. Uh, sometimes um, one may think the virtual learning environment might just simply be the learning management system. But for today's, today's students, they're not only using a product such as Blackboard, which is uh, QUT's learning management system, they're using a suite of other online tools that are available to them. Um, they're going to be collaboration type technologies, um, obviously um, sourcing information from the internet, so using our base network infrastructure and the services that are on top of that is, is a good example. Um, the student management system, being able to access information about their courses, their units, their grades, um, uh, using um, uh, perhaps uh, collaboration environments to communicate not only with other students but their lecturers um, or their tutors. And um, these sorts of things I, I think have been around for a little while. It's what's happening next is actually where, um, where we're focusing and about how we're helping students adapt to their changing behaviours and what's going on uh, globally. So some of those initiatives um, are certainly around um, how do we look at um, our traditional unit delivery and transform it in a matter, in a way that enables the student to get a richer experience. Packaging up information in, an, in a manner that is, uh, will enable students to learn on the move, um, to be uh, relevant and uh, adaptable to de depending on the envi environment that they're in, whether they're on campus or off campus, and no matter what device that they're on. So moving from a, a, a process where we're looking at transforming our curricula and looking at other kinds of innovative initiatives, uh, QUT has had for some uh, a period of time, a program around student success. Now that has been in itself very, very successful. Um, it's been based on a, a putting in place a process that seeks to uh, um, source data, either manually input or from some of the systems that we have, to identify uh, students at risk and then engage with them on a very personal and confidential basis about how we can better support them. Analytics is being used increasingly uh, around being able to identify uh, patterns um, in our operating model and about how we can improve uh, better outcomes. For example, um, students that may take or not take prerequisite uh, courses to achieve the next stage of their learning outcome, uh, we find perhaps that there are relationships in a course structure or across courses that if we knew about them um, could help the student be more successful. And so we're now using analytics, for example, that can better, un uh, can better uh, unpack the types of prerequisite courses or information or learning that students um, should uh, be uh, benefiting from to enable them to be more successful in their future course decisions and future unit decisions. So it's being able to look at that data en masse, which is enabling us to better structure um, how we're putting together curricula. So that's another really interesting and um, uh, rapid area of development. Uh, the final area I'll talk about is around e-research. So when you look at the business of researchers and, um, and, and the processes that, and support technologies that they have, um, we find that there's probably four levels of support that they need. One is around um, how do we help researchers better curate information what facilities do we provide to help them process information, um, the technologies we pro provide to help share information, and then finally storing it. And there's rapid changes occurring in all of those, in, in all of those uh, tiers of what we call research data management. So a lot of development and a lot of innovation going on in that area to help researchers uh, with research data management, uh, tools and support services so that uh, they can certainly be more successful in collaboration with their peers, um, the publishing of papers and uh, citations, uh, but also about digital preservation of the, of the knowledge uh, and the data that they generate as a result of their research. So some really exciting areas there. You may think, for example, that um, delivering to a, information to a mobile phone can't be too hard. But when you think about 
how does a student learn? How does a learner learn on a, in a mobile environment? They might learn better if the image and the text are seen close together. However, on smaller devices, we have to really rethink and reconceptualize how does a student learn on a mobile phone? How do we better best deliver um, you know, content on those other kinds of devices that students may use to, uh, choose to use? Um, there are going to be multiple uh, generations and approaches to being able to better uh, engage with the learners and uh, for learners to engage with their peers in, I guess, as we take more advantage of technologies going forward.